Now, I have to confess, with all that happened in free agency, with all that has been happening in the world the past several weeks, and how just kind of hectic life is in general right now, apparently somehow I missed this. I don't remember seeing it. I don't remember tweeting about it. I don't remember anything about it. I don't remember doing a video about it. Uh, I don't know what the hell happened. But apparently the Cowboys gave Amari Cooper a big money long-term deal. Maybe I'm just having some old man amnesia at this point. I don't damn know. But I don't remember hearing anything about that. And not only to give him a big money exception, they gave him five years, $100 million, of which $60 million is guaranteed. 40 of it fully guaranteed immediately, another 20 for injury. And the only reason I even realized this had actually happened and was a thing, and again, I, I don't know, like, I feel like I'm drawing a blank here, was because apparently Rex Ryan was asked about this the other day on ESPN and said he wouldn't have given that turd, referring to Amari Cooper, that much money for disappearing in big games and all of that. And I guess the question is, should the Cowboys have given him this much money? And is Rex Ryan right? Is Amari Cooper a turd? And I think when you look at the first one, it almost feels like the Cowboys were kind of in a box here. This was an Amari Cooper that they had given up a first-round pick halfway through the 2018 season to acquire from the Oakland Raiders, the team that originally drafted him fourth overall in 2015. So you bring in a guy, have him a year and a half. Are you really ready and prepared to lose him in free agency for potentially a compensatory pick in another year from now for a guy that you gave up a first-round pick to get that delivered you nothing? And I'm not blaming Amari Cooper. I'm just saying that's the reality. You gave up a first-round pick for a year and a half of a guy and didn't get anywhere with it from a championship standpoint? Really hard to justify that, especially when Amari Cooper didn't totally faceplant in Dallas. Now, if he had come in and totally blown chunks and was just bad or was playing like he didn't even deserve to be a starter in the league, then at that point in time you have to admit the sunken cost and you have to admit it's time to move on. But for the Cowboys, it kind of feels like they didn't have much of a choice here. Especially since they already had lost Byron Jones in free agency, uh, their corner. You know, this was one, That was one of the three big games or big contracts there were to watch in this offseason for Dallas. Amari Cooper was another one, and Dak Prescott was certainly the biggest one of all. And we know the Cowboys have franchised them, and they're trying to work on a long-term deal. So what was going to happen with Amari Cooper? It, it's kind of weird to think about it. Because this is the one time, at least for now, that the Dallas Cowboys were actually going to have some damn salary cap space. Like they're in this unique position for a Jerry Jones run organization where they actually have money, legit money available under the salary cap to pay all of their big names, all of their stars. Uh, we've been through this cycle before, and ultimately when it didn't work out, it created problems downstream for many years for the organization. But when you look at this deal, you, know, you could say on the surface, just immediately, you're paying him elite money, and he is not elite. You do not think of him in the same context as a Julio Jones or a DeAndre Hopkins. You do not think of him in the same light as a Michael Thomas. You do not think of him in the same light as an Odell Beckham Jr. He is not somebody you think of as a top five wide receiver in the league. And I think for a lot of people, especially if you get past the, he's at with the Cowboys, so he plays on national TV all the time. I don't think many people would even refer to Amari Cooper as a top 10 wide receiver in the league. And when you look at a position like wide receiver where an argument certainly can be made that paying big time money to star talents is not the best use of your cap allocation, um, it, it can be considered a questionable move. Especially when Amari Cooper is not a big time number one wide receiver. And even if you're a Cowboys fan and you like him, that's cool. I'm not saying Amari Cooper can't play. Amari Cooper is a good, solid NFL wide receiver. Amari Cooper is not elite. Amari Cooper is not a game breaker. Amari Cooper is not a massive difference maker. Amari Cooper is not going to be a guy that game in and game out opposing defenses have a tremendous amount of worry having to game plan for. He's just not that dude. He is realistically a glorified, supersized number two wide receiver. It's what he's been since he got into the league. It's what he was in Oakland. It's what he is now in Dallas. Just because he happens to line up as the number one wide receiver, he is not that. 
Here is the MO on Amari Cooper every year. He'll have three or four really, really big games, and then most of the rest of the year you have trouble figuring out where the hell he is. That's not a number one wide receiver. That is not a game breaker. That is not a difference maker. And by and large, to me, when you are paying massive money to a player in a position like wide receiver, if you're going to pay that much, they need to be a game breaker. They need to be a difference maker. They need to be a legit number one guy. All of those things Amari Cooper is not. Good player, yes. Very good NFL wide receiver, maybe. You'd like to have him on your team, maybe. But you certainly feel a lot better about it if he was your number two wide receiver. And you certainly would feel a lot better about it if you're not paying him $20 million a damn year. You're basically giving him Julio Jones money to not be anywhere close to Julio Jones. And maybe you can make the argument here that if you're going to invest that much in Dak Prescott, you don't want to pay big money to Dak Prescott and then have him lose his number one wide receiver. It's a valid point. Certainly a valid way to look at it. But if they lost Amari Cooper via free agency, let's just say, and they went with Michael Gallup and some other guys, and then they brought in somebody in the draft, would it have really have been that much worse? Like, would it really have been? And in the process, probably would have saved yourself a crap ton of money under the salary cap. Now, for the Cowboys, granted, they were in a position where they actually had cap space available, so they could go out there and make some of these moves and re-sign some of these guys, I just worry about whether or not um, they're going to regret it in a year or two. We'll see. But as far as the uh, statement by Rex Ryan <laughs> calling Amari Cooper a turd, one, takes a turd to know a turd, two, Last I checked, Rex Ryan was a complete abject failure in frickin' Buffalo in his last head coaching job, so what the hell would he know about being a turd? Oh, that's right, because he is one. He called Amari Cooper a turd. Talk about how he disappeared in big spots and he's not that type of guy. And you know what? Calling somebody a turd may or may not be called for. It's kind of funny, but kind of stupid and petty at the same time, I'll grant you. But I gotta give Rex Ryan this. He is barking up the right tree here. Because, correct me if I'm wrong, isn't Amari Cooper the same guy that at key points and times of games last season when you have the playoff appearance on the line, Amari Cooper's on the sidelines, Amari Cooper's not in the game, and yet you turn around in the offseason and you devote $100 million potentially over five years to him, including $40 million, $40, 40, 40, ah, fully guaranteed, and another $20 million or so guaranteed for injury? Who the hell does that? In big spots and big games, he did nothing. The coaching staff was putting him on the sidelines because he was quitting on routes, he was doing this, he was doing that, anything and everything except for making a damn impact. And you might think Rex Ryan is a clown show, because he is. You might think he's a jerk and an ace, because he is. You might not like him because he was a raging trumper. That's your business. doesn't really matter when we talk about football, but in the grand scheme of things, when it comes to what he's saying here, I think calling Amari Cooper a turd for a guy that has, what, three or 4,000 yard receiving seasons in his five years in the league is a bit of a stretch. Like Mark Sanchez ended up being a turd. Oh, oh, that's right. That's the guy that Rex Ryan wanted as his quarterback. But fumble. That was a turd. Amari Cooper is not a turd. That does not meet the definition of a turd. Rex Grossman was a complete and total turd. Amari Cooper actually puts up respectable seasons at his position and has done it numerous times. It's just kind of misleading because you'll have a game, he goes for like 10 catches, 180 yards, and two touchdowns. Then it's a month before he gets into the end zone again. Or it's a month and a half before he has his next six-catch, 100-yard game, and you only get two or three of those a damn year. Fair to say he's overrated. Fair to say he's not a true number one wide receiver. Absolutely, totally, and completely fair to say that he's not a game breaker, he's not a difference maker, he's not elite, because he's not. He is a good player, not a truly great one. While granted, not worth elite money at his position, if that's a turd, then I honestly would like a couple of more turds on my Bears team. I'm just saying. I don't know. 
Why Rex Grossman of all, or not Rex Grossman, what, oh, what the hell is the difference? What the hell did Rex Ryan have against Amari Cooper so damn bad? <laughs> the hate runs strong with him, I don't know. But turd he's not. But a bit overrated, yes he is. And worth the money that Dallas just paid him, hell to the gnaw.